So the most important part of a pet for newer players is the fetch aura. If a pet has fetch aura, it will pick up all the items that drop in a dungeon for you automatically. You can either buy a fetch aura from the item mall for 500 keqing or 100 mil ed. So there are a few ways you can get a free fetch aura in the game currently. So out of the current event dungeons, this one will give you a permanent pet and a permanent fetch aura exclusively for that pet. And then this dungeon will also give you a permanent pet and a permanent fetch aura exclusively for that pet. And then finally, this dungeon will give you a permanent pet, but there's no permanent fetch aura exclusively for that pet from this dungeon. You can also get a free temporary fetch aura from the epic quest. So if you go to chapter 7, this quest right here, if you complete this, this will give you a temporary fetch aura for 15 days. If you play Labby, the epic quest is called I Know You, and it's also in chapter 7. And then in chapter 2, you get this pet right here from this quest, and this pet comes with 15 days of fetch aura. And if you play Labby, this epic quest is called Need to Learn, and it's also in chapter 2. You can also get temporary fetch auras by opening the job change cubes. So the first job change cube gives one that lasts for 15 days, the second job change cube gives you one that lasts for 30 days, the transcendence one gives you one that lasts for 15 days, the third job one gives you one that lasts for 30 days, and the master class job change cube gives you one that lasts for 30 days as well. So you can also get fetch auras from there. And then if you don't have a fetch aura and you want to know where to pick up the drops in Rosso Raid, please refer to the video linked in the description. Another reason why having a pet is nice for newer players is that if you keep your pet fed, so if you keep its hunger above 40%, it will also increase your CP a little bit. And then this can be useful if you're having a bit of trouble entering a dungeon because of a CP requirement and feeding a pet might help you reach a CP requirement. So you can pretty much feed your pet any equipment you don't need anymore, and if you don't have any equipment randomly lying around, you can buy gloves from the Elder Blacksmith, those are the cheapest, but you can pretty much just buy equipment from any blacksmith. And once your pet reaches 70% affinity, it will enter a special status and it won't eat anything besides elder fruits and seeds and you can just simply wait for the pet to get hungry, lose affinity, and then you can feed it with equipment again. And then the last reason why pets are nice for newer players is that if you press I and you click pet, then you get this pet inventory space and it's just nice to have some extra inventory space. Some pets don't have this inventory space um, for sure, temporary pets don't have this inventory space, but yeah, so extra inventory space. This inventory space can be used to automatically feed your pet. So if you click the auto feed function, it will auto feed your pet whenever its hunger goes under 80%. And then your pet will eat the items in the following order. First, it'll eat the equipment from the lowest level to the highest level, and then it'll eat your L tree seeds, and then you'll eat your L tree fruits. And then finally, if you ever accidentally feed an important piece of equipment to your pet, you can request it to be restored through customer support. For more information on that, please refer to the link in the description. There are pets that are better than others because they attack more frequently, etc. But generally, as far as currently obtainable pets go, the best pets to go for are probably Mellow or Jay. So you can get Mellow from this event dungeon, and you can get Jay from this event dungeon. Mellow is slightly better than Jay because Mellow's attack has more hits, does more damage, and has a better circular hitbox, but currently you only can get a free fetch aura for Jay and not Mellow. Mellow and Jay are good because their attacks count as command or active damage and can kill grey thorns or grey cages in Rosso Raid. Their attacks count as your attacks, so they can trigger effects that trigger from commands or actives. Overall, it does not matter greatly what pet you have, just that you build the pet properly. And the next thing I want to talk about are gem of skills. So each pet comes with two pet accessory slots. So right here, you can fill these with gem of skills. Gem of skills can either be bought off the board from other players or obtained from pet expeditions. For more information on pet expeditions and gem of skills, please refer to the link in the description. And then to equip a gem of skill, you want to right click it from your inventory and then click on the accessory slot you want to put it in. And you cannot remove a gem once you have applied it, but you can resock it. Ideally, you want two pets in the game. One pet should be your damage pet that you use for things such as raid, hainer, etc. The other pet should be your farming pet that you use for farming things such as 13-3, etc. I will explain more later why you want two pets. For your damage pet, you generally want encourage cooldown decrease 11-15% to on both slots. And then for your farming pet, you generally want EXP increase 5% or 6% on both slots. So the next thing I want to talk about is encouragement. So when your HP is 40% and below, your pet encourages you, granting you these buffs for 24 seconds. So you get 
Attack and movement speed plus 15%, critical plus 18%, max HP and remaining HP increased by 40%, HP recovery 1.5% per second, MP recovery 18 MP per second, and the cooldown for this is 180 seconds. So your pet's hunger needs to be 40% or higher in order for encouragement to be active, and to trigger encouragement, players will take off all their armor and weapon, then put it back on. This normally can be done at the start of 12-7 Phase 1. To reset the cooldown for encouragement, you can die after Phase 1 and Phase 2 in 12-7 and then take off gear and put it back on again. You wouldn't die just for the sake of resetting pet encouragement cooldown, you'd normally die to reset the title Guardian of Elbria node and reset this along with it. Some classes, depending on passives and gear, do not reach 40% HP to proc encourage just by taking gear off and putting it on again. In this case, you can title swap to the 13-3 title Come Hell and High Water, which instantly decreases your HP by 10%. And then finally, you need to be hit or hit something a certain amount of times to proc encouragement. Alright, so to proc encouragement, you want to take off all your gear, and then if you need it, you want to switch to this title, and then switch back to what title you were using before, and then you want to put back on your gear, and that should lower your HP below 40%, and then you need to hit something or get hit, and that should activate encouragement. So yeah, here's encouragement up here, right here. So if your encouragement doesn't proc, you want to resummon your pet. It's a glitch, and you will have to get hit or get hit again, but you don't need to reload your HP in the case it does glitch. So next I want to talk about special encouragement, so press P to pull up the pet interface, click growth, and then you can access the growth points page, then you click refill nutrition to give your pet growth points, so let's say I put this in here and I click refill, there, I get a growth point. So now I want to talk about the items you can use to refill your pet's nutrition with. You can give your pet any equipment pieces you don't need. You can also buy gloves from the Elder Blacksmith, that's the cheapest, but you can buy any equipment from any village blacksmith. And these equipment pieces will take your pet 5 hours to digest and it'll give your pet to 1 growth point. You can also give your pet QPL Jelly, step 11. So these can be obtained by exchanging magical crystals to any village blacksmith. L tree fruits can also be given to your pet, and these can be bought off the board from other players, brought from a caging seller, or from the item mall for 25 caging. And you can also exchange stewardship coins to Stella and Bethlehem Village. If you activate a security pin for your account, every day if you log in for more than 10 minutes, you get a stewardship coin. To activate your security pin, go to the official Elsewhere page, which is linked in the description, and log into your account. Go to Account Management, Edit Profile, Security Settings, and then follow the steps there. And then L Tree Fruits take your pet 1 hour to digest and give you 3 growth points. L tree seeds can also be given to your pets, and you exchange stewardship points to sell at Betha Village to get these, or you can exchange evil souls orbs to Ariel in any village to get those as well. For more information on how to get evil souls orbs, please refer to the link in the description. It's pretty inefficient, so I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're interested, the information's there. And L tree seeds take your pet two hours to digest, and they give you two growth points. And then you can also give strange L tree seeds to your pets. These can be obtained from the weekly guild quests and it takes your pet 2 hours to digest them and it gives your pet 2 growth points. And finally, you can give your pet L jellies and these can be obtained from pet expeditions. And once again, for more information on that, please refer to the link in the description. You can speed up your pet's digestion with digestive medicine and that can also be obtained from pet expedition. And it can also be bought off the board from other players. So you want to have 3,000 growth points for your pet in order to gain access to special encouragement. As for priorities for growth point investment, how recommends you get encouragement cooldown decrease first, then encouragement duration increase, and then pet skill MP cost decrease, and then finally pet skill damage increase. Having 1,000 points in encouragement cooldown decrease will decrease your pet's encouragement cooldown from 180 seconds to 120.06 seconds. Having 1,000 points in encouragement duration increase will increase the duration of your pet's encouragement from 24 seconds to 36 seconds, and then 1,000 points in pet skill MP cost decrease will lower it by 15%, and having 1,000 points in pet skill damage increase will increase the damage by 50%. So special encouragement is independent from normal encouragement, so there is no HP threshold condition, and the cooldown is 90 seconds, and this is an internal cooldown, meaning you have to wait 90 seconds before the first effect shows up, and you can't reset it. So after 90 seconds, one of the following effects will be applied at random, so you'll either get 50% of HP and MP recovered, or you'll get physical and magical attack 
plus 5% for 30 seconds, or you'll have all your skill cooldowns reset. And your pet's hunger needs to be 40% or higher in order for a special encouragement to be active. The effect of encouragement and special encouragement can also increase your pet's high affinity. This affinity bonus is multiplicative. To raise the affinity of a pet, you just need to do dungeons with it and maintain its hunger above 40%. The first time you feed a pet per day, you will get a 2% affinity increase. Don't feed your pet strange L tree seeds if you are trying to raise affinity, those lower affinity when fed to a pet. Fantastic QPL jellies raise your pet's affinity by 2% when fed to them, and strange QPL jellies raise your pet's affinity by 5% when fed to them. If you want to raise a pet to have 100% affinity, it is highly recommended you have two pets. You would ideally use a pet with 100% affinity when running dungeons where you want that extra damage boost and then use the other pet when farming more common dungeons because maintaining a pet at 100% affinity can get pretty expensive. Once your pet reaches 70% affinity, it will enter special mode and during special mode, the pet will only eat L tree seeds or L tree fruits. This is why it is expensive to maintain a pet at 100% affinity. And the last thing I want to talk about is the pet auto consume quick slot expansion. So using this item will unlock the pet auto consume quick slots for all your pets on a character. And you can obtain a pet auto consume quick slot through the following ways. The first is you can get a temporary one for 30 days by exchanging rewards from the Velder Academy concert event dungeon to Ariel. So if you go to Ariel and you click exchange. So right here you can exchange for it. You also get a temporary 15 day one from any of the job change cubes. And then finally, you can buy one from the IM for 425 caging, or you can buy off the board from another player or from a caging seller. And to access the menu, click on the quick slot icons under the pet icon under your icon in the top left hand corner. So click here and it'll open up the thing. And like it says in the description, you can put consumables in the quick slots and set an HP or MP threshold. When your HP or MP falls below the set threshold, your pet will automatically use a consumable. So one thing you can do for cutscenes is you can set your onions at 40%. And then during the cutscene, you can take off your gear and then put on Calm Hell and High Water if you need it. And then switch to GOE and put on any other awakening stuff. And then you want to put back on your gear and that should like activate the onion, which should activate the GOE and other effects for you. So then after the cutscene's over, you don't have to waste any time manually awakening for the effect.